You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next, the Michigan City Plan Commission meeting of June 28th. You can get more information for this meeting by going to www.accesslaportcounty.org. Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 at 6.05, and this is the regular meeting of the Michigan City Plan Commission. Um, next item is roll call. Mr. Ross Balling. Here. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Here. Mr. Granquist. Here. Mr. Gresham. Here. Mr. Clender. Here. Mr. Lashford. Here. Mr. Zimmer. Here. And Attorney Hill. Here. We have a quorum. Next item is to approve the agenda for this evening. If there's no objections, I'll take a motion. So motion. Move. Second. <clears throat> Mr. Balling. Yes. Mr. Granquist. Yes. Mr. Gresham. Yes. Mr. Clender. Yes. Mr. Lashford. Yes. Mr. Zimmer. Yes. Motion approved. Next item is to approve the minutes from our last meeting, which was in May on the 26th. Uh, I assume everybody had a chance to review those. If there's no changes or um, questions, I would take a motion to approve them. If there are no motions for any changes, I would move for approval as submitted. I second. Mr. Balling? Yes. Mr. Granquist? Yes. Mr. Gresham? Yes. Mr. Clender? Yes. Mr. Latchford? Yes. And Mr. Zimmer? I'll abstain. I wasn't here. Absolutely. Motion approved. So our first petition this evening is 901-22, one and two. I think this is a carryover from previous meetings. I'll, I'll inter yeah, I'll introduce it. This is a request by Market Mall uh, Properties and Sterling Capital Limited uh, for primary and secondary plot approval for a minor subdivision located at parcel 46 05 05 476-012.000 dash 009 uh, at 4027 Franklin Street. They'll be represented by Mr. Tony Hendricks. And I do believe this is continued by May from May. And, the, and then I think Chris Willoughby is going to represent them as well. So I'll hand the floor over to you. Good evening, Christopher Willoughby of Bridgie Nelson and Jane's uh, here on behalf of M. Jones Properties, and tonight I have one of the principals with me, Brandon Jones, um, as well as Tony Hendricks, who will handle uh, any technical questions you have, um, who was the surveyor and, and did most of the heavy lifting on the, the items before you. And again, we're also here um, through, as Mr. York indicated, um, on behalf of Market Mall Properties Limited and Sterling Capital uh, LP limited partnership who are the the owners of the parent parcel and i have a letter of authorization that we've submitted to council as well as all of our um, notices to turn out to be quite a list for that parent parcel of the uh, abutting uh, joining owners as well as our notice for publication so i will defer just to make sure uh, uh, that that our notice is in order but otherwise if you'd like me to continue, I will. Yeah. You'd like me to respond? I could. Yeah. Yes, uh, certainly. Mr. Willoughby very kindly provided uh, well in advance, copy of all the notice docu documentation. I find it to be in order. He satisfied our requirements, and you're free to proceed and hear this matter. Great. Thanks, Mr. Hale. 
luckily at some point, and it doesn't happen often, uh, the, the code, this is one of those processes that the code intends to simplify the process. Uh, what we're here is asking for a minor subdivision of an outlet, approximately one acre in size, that uh, fronts uh, Franklin Street. Uh, it's the northwest corner of Franklin and 421, generally between the little new strip mall that's there and Walgreens. Um, as you're, I think most of you are aware, uh, the Jones family, Buffalo Wild Wings has been a, 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 a good citizen, a good company, and um, looking to build new and invest in a property that it sorely in need of it. So it, the synergies there work out um, before you, you know, we, we feel that this process is pretty straightforward in terms of checking the boxes of what we need to do and then defer to any technical questions you may have. But um, again, we are asking that you approve a primary and secondary and minor subdivision of this outlot. Um, we, uh, you've, we verified that our, our notices are appropriate We've submitted and had our concept plan and administrative review. Um, we believe that the plan for this parcel uh, generally complies with the standards of the subdivision ordinance, including the provisions of the minor subdivision ordinance, um, and otherwise materially comply with all material uh, requirements as evidenced by our submissions. It, it was noted in the original submission that we were seeking some variances, which that creates a little bit more of a process, but we believe since that time that sidewalks indeed are not uh, required and we are otherwise not asking for any variances. So from our position, that makes things a little easier and yours definitely a little easier because you have a little regime that you have to follow in certain findings, additional findings that you specifically. So um, with that said, I, I will, keep it brief and defer to any questions or on the technical aspects or um, procedurally that you might have, but otherwise we respectfully request that you consider approval of the primary and secondary flat. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Willoughby. We'll take the reports first and then uh, entertain questions and comments. So uh, Skyler, if you wanna do yours. Yes. So this is a staff report for case 901-22, uh, um, commonly known, I think the subdivision will be known as uh, subdivision 40, uh, uh, 4027 Franklin Street. It's a minor subdivision. Uh, the request, the petitioner's requesting a primary and secondary plat approval for a minor, minor I'm sorry, minor subdivision, 4027 Franklin Street, uh, more commonly what we would refer to as the Market Mall parking lot. Um, Staff analysis, the property in question is an old mall with a large parking lot. The petitioner is requesting to subdivide a smaller outlot from the larger mother lot. Uh, this lot is located along Franklin Street frontage area. Uh, the lot meets the minimum square footage and has adequate frontage to be subdivided. The petitioner, uh, as noted by Mr. Willoughby, also requested a, a, a sidewalk waiver. And if you look at in our section of uh, section 06.05, sidewalk and motor non-motorized uh, systems for a subdivision code, we exclude um, administrative and minor subdivisions. So we cannot, re we cannot require that. Um, staff recommendations. The planning staff has reviewed the proposed subdivision and finds the request to be in compliance with all applicable subdivision ordinance standards and recommends that the planning commission approve the primary and secondary request pending submission of a corrected primary plat. I just need some corrections. That's all um, specifically uh, in deed of, deed of dedication, Tony. Um, uh, front and side yard building lines uh, are, are hereby established and shown on this plat. There, there aren't any. Just, just exclude that. And then we're not dedicating anything. So we just need to exclude that, that cert down there on the left. And that's it. Those are my only comments. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Um, I would say once I get that in, if you guys vote to approve, we would just sign off. Uh, thank you. My uh, attorney report is for petition number 901 22, subsection 1 and subsection 2. I think it's important to note that the petitioner, subdividers, and property owners are three entities Marquette Mall Properties Limited and Sterling Capital LP. Uh, they own the Marquette Mall 
let's call it parent uh, parcel. And the, the third property owner, subdivider, petitioner is M. Jones Properties, LLC. They purchased a small piece comprising approximately one acre from the other two, that is Marquette Mall Properties and Sterling Capital in January. Uh, it was recorded uh, here uh, at the recorder's office in Laporte County. Um, you have a copy of that deed in your materials. So you would have seen it. So now we are subdividing this to officially create the small lot as a, a subdivision. It is appropriate that it's a minor subdivision uh, because we're just creating one lot. Even though the property was conveyed, we're now going to subdivide it. And so we have those two parcels that are involved, the parent parcel and the uh, purchased parcel of one acre that is being cut off or subdivided off. And that has its own parcel number. Uh, you'll see in my report, I, I point that out and I give you those parcel numbers if it's important. It's, it is important that um, the petitioner and Mr. Willoughby very kindly provided uh, to us a letter of authorization from Marquette Mall Properties Limited and Sterling Capital LLP, whereby they're giving uh, M. Jones Properties and Mr. Willoughby specifically the power to represent them and to push or to uh, uh, seek uh, approval of this subject. So that box has been checked. So what we end up with then is just the petitioners requesting a minor subdivision approval. It's one and two on our petition number because they're asking for primary and secondary approval. This body has done that many times in the past. That is granted for a uh, minor subdivision approval of both the uh, primary and secondary plats at the same meeting. Uh, when it's so simple as, as something that is before you, there's no real reason to hold up. There aren't going to be um, any building permits. There aren't going to be any changes. There's no dedication. Um, it's a rather straightforward subdivision. However, um, following review by Mr. Schuyler and his department, uh, this body is to hold a public hearing, consider the uh, minor subdivision request, and determine if it meets the requirements of this ordinance, the subdivision ordinance. Uh, my understanding of Mr. York's uh, report is that he's found that it does. Um, and so I will just state that your decision tonight is <clears throat> primarily to determine if it meets with the uh, requirements of the subdivision ordinance and you may grant approval, you may grant approval, but only with modifications uh, that would bring it within the requirements of the subdivision ordinance, or you may reject it because it doesn't meet those requirements. I would just add one other thing. I think it's important that um, the materials that are included in the record of this matter include that letter of authorization. Uh, and you'll note in my report that I've indicated that that is to be part of the materials that are in this file. Otherwise, I think you have the materials you need to make a determination. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hale. So I'll open it to uh, uh, commission members to ask any questions, make any comments. Uh, if I could. Yes, please. Um, so uh, just a couple clarifications here then. Both uh, Mr. Hale, Mr. York mentioned sidewalks. And so now we're saying that's not a part of it because technically it's not a part of the minor subdivision. So we can just kind of strike that from our, our thought process here. Yeah, we specifically exclude in the reference, it is specifically excludes um, administrative subs, which um, we do um, by plat committee, other uh, small transfers of land, but things like that, if we need right away, small transfers of land. Um, and it, it specifically references minor subs. 
Okay. And it doesn't say how big the lot is, how much, you know, it says minor subs. I would assume that's probably, you know, like a major subdivision, you're subdividing you know, three or more lots. You're building, sometimes you're building new roads. Obviously you wouldn't want to build a road that's subpar sure. theoretically nowadays. Does that also include landscaping? requirements that were mentioned by Mr. so Hattie. landscaping are part of the zoning code and this board cannot do that that would be a that would be a board of zoning appeals because it's okay. part of the and it specifically references in zero six and that's or in another section that uh they cannot the, this board cannot hear or cannot modify I'm, I'm paraphrasing cannot modify anything that is a purview of the board of zoning appeals so they would need to go in front of the BZA to at that get point. A time. Yeah, okay. to get a variance. It would be a variance at that point in time. Now they could get a variance prior to coming to this board, but you could also do it in a flip-flop as well. Sure. Typically you get a variance before coming to this board if you needed a variance from like a setback line or a modification of a lot line or uh you'd be granted something like that, like you know, to subdivide. But yeah, they could go afterwards as well. Got it. So as such, is there any modification needed to the actual petition since both of these items aren't applicable to this board? I, I don't think so. I think we're okay. Um, as long as we address them publicly, um, I'll defer to Steve, Mr. Hill on that one, that question. I'm not, I'm not aware of any modifications that would have to be made to bring the require or the requested a minor subdivision into compliance with our subdivision. Thank you. And just to be clear, we're withdrawing any reference to those. So okay. I think that Excellent. will clear it up for you too. I just didn't want to, I wanted to make sure we didn't have anything in there that would, that could hold up the process. So um, out of curiosity, is this uh, petition fall under the new or old petition process? So when they first applied for this, um, which I would say they were vested at that point in time, it was uh, done under the old process. Okay. Um, they still had to notify quite a few people with, with sure. even the old There's process. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a big lot. So um, I feel, and I, I guess I would ask Mr. Hill, I feel like they were vested underneath the old process because they did apply in the timely manner under the old process. Okay. Uh, past that, uh, the, the technical aspects I'm, I'm satisfied on. I just would like to say, uh, uh, Mr. Jones and his group, I think if I ate at your old location anymore, I'd probably have a conflict of interest. But um, <laughs> uh, I would like to say that I think this is a great uh, opportunity for a very underutilized property. I know this location gets a lot of mention locally. So to see something uh, productive, useful, going up in this location. I'm thrilled to see that. Um, we also don't get a lot of existing businesses in front of this group. So I'd like to thank you for, you know, working with school organizations and lots of the teams in town and all that kind of stuff. I think your, your group is very friendly to the community and I absolutely love that on a personal basis. And that's, that's what I'd like to talk about. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Gresham. Um, Skylar, just going back to the uh, question of sidewalks again for a minute. So, you know, in the past we talked about, you know, that there's some future big plans for what's going to happen to the 421 corridor and, you know, the whole Marquette Mall property and all that. So we don't know what any of that is, but if, if in the future the, they do want to, we do want to add sidewalks, how does, does that does this, uh, how is that happening? Sure, sure. I can address some of that. So it's the same. It's, it'd be similar to what we're trying to do now. We're going to have to probably work with Mr. Jones to figure out a way to do that. Um, it may not be a sidewalk. It may be a, a pathway more. May, maybe it's behind the building rather than in the front. You know, uh, we always think it's sidewalks traditionally, but in the 421 area, we've had to think kind of non-traditionally because there isn't much right of way sometimes. So, um, fortunately the project we're working on right now in the South TIF down there, we do have the opportunity to, uh, um, acquire some property. We're, we're putting in some, we're going to be putting in some sidewalks. Um, we haven't come this far North yet, but it would be done in a similar manner as what we've kind of contemplated in the, in the past with 
So on a parcel by parcel basis. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes we have a lot of right away and sometimes we don't have any. And sometimes those no, sometimes when there's none, it's like, do we, do we, do we get an easement for a sidewalk or do we come up with something non-traditional or maybe it's a pathway, maybe it's in the backside. There's a lot of land here as we all know. Mm -hmm. Um, So it could be more of a non-traditional sidewalk. Maybe it's a a pathway that is for bikes and people rather than just up, up against it's, it's probably not the most uh, uh, what's the word I want to look for. Uh, best thing to you know more com- most comfortable thing to walk next to 421 on a sidewalk right up against it so it may be an opportunity to do something a little different okay. thank you uh, you know the goal is always we need more pedestrian access down there we need to keep focusing on that right. it's not just uh here it's all the way down right. i would say yeah that was that was the point of my question yeah <laughs> okay thanks yeah. any other questions comments from commission members any, uh, oh, yes. May I ask uh, Mr. Willoughby a question? Yes, please. You, you set that up. You want that part of, of your filing? Oh, yes, that, that, that we were trying to make sure that we comply because I, as we interpret the code and in discussions with Mr. Hale, uh, a, a, a uh, plat of the parent parcel is required. So thank you for bringing that up. And I did set that in front of them as requested, but I agree. I, I just want then an, an, uh, our record to show that as part of the materials in this file and part of the record tonight, there is this uh, additional survey. It's dated 6 That makes it rather distinct. So we'll know what one we're talking about, but we'll add it to the record. Great. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I'll open it to the public uh, for any questions, comments related to this petition. Okay, not hearing or seeing anybody, uh, that uh, public comment is closed. And so then uh, if there's no further questions or comments, we'll take a motion on this petition. I would move to approve uh, this minor subdivision uh, petition numbers 901-221 and two, um, finding that it meets our our, uh, zoning ordinances. So there's a motion, is there a second? Second. Oops, sorry. Um, I'm gonna ask one question. I'm sorry, was your motion to approve both primary and second? That is correct. If that's uh, just making sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mr. Balling. Yes. Mr. Granquist. Yes. Mr. Gresham. Yes. Mr. Clender. Yes. Mr. Lashford. Yes. And Mr. Zimmer. Yes. Approved. Motion approved. Congratulations, gentlemen, and best of luck on the project. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Bring it to Stamp it, Sonic. These days, you can never say. Okay, our second petition this evening is 900 22. And um, who is going to be introducing this one? I'll, I'll introduce it, and then I'll hand it over to um, uh, the petitioners. Uh, the request is uh, is 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 by WP twenty one uh, LLC for primary plot approval for a fourteen lot major subdivision known as Beechwood Subdivision, located on located on approximately two point seven one acre parcel, uh, situated generally between Jake Lane on the north, Washington Park Boulevard on the south, Lorraine Road on the west, uh, east of residential lots, and Childers Lane on the east. They'll be represented by uh, Mr. John Doyle and Associates, uh, survey and engineers. 
tonight. I'll hand the floor off to John and Daryl. And I am attorney for oh, the sorry, petitioner. I will, I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> I will step down and recuse myself from the commission to step down and make the initial presentation. I'm sorry, Dan. I forgot about that. And, 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 and attorney Dan, Grand, Dan Grandquist will be representing them as well. So we still have a quorum when Dan steps down. Right. One, two, five four, people. Four. So, so, it, so there still is a quorum, but it has to be a unanimous vote at this point in time. Okay. Yes. Okay. A unanimous vote. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Dan. <laughs> I am Dan Granquist, uh, attorney representing WP21 LLC. We have the principal here, Zach Rivko. We have uh, uh, engineer and surveyor Doyle, uh, John Doyle, and Daryl from the engineering office there. This is a petition for primary plat approval. Uh, if you may recall, back in April, there was the presentation for the concept plan and the development plan. This is in the zoning district, A13 or five, and it required the concept plan and a special development plan for that. This is a vacant land uh, just south of the uh, beach walk subdivision there, right off of Washington Park Boulevard. An exciting opportunity to develop some infill lots in the city. 14 lots are proposed right along Washington Boulevard on the north side there. Uh, the concept plan and development plan were approved back in April. I was uh, unfortunately otherwise disposed and not able to attend. So we appreciate and thank them for appearing without me at that time. The plan was approved and this is very much uh, very similar, the same plat for 14 acres. And you have the plat before you. I uh, also will com comment that this is a petition on the new process. Uh, some commissioners have uh, inquired about that. I believe I'm the guinea pig to, uh, to begin that process. Uh, it was, it's a lot more onerous than the process previously when we submitted the original concept plan and development plan. Uh, but uh, you have a lot of notes, a lot of information there. And without rehashing all of that and, and presenting that, I will open it up for any questions for me from the petition aspect uh, or from the engineering aspect there. But we do request uh, your uh, unanimous approval of this primary plat there. Thank you, Mr. Grandquist. Um, Let's hear Skyler and uh, Mr. Hales, uh, Mr. York's and Mr. Hales reports, and then we'll discuss. Um, this is a report on case number 922, or I'm sorry, 900-22 Beachwood Major Subdivision. This is for primary plat. The request, the, uh, they're requesting primary plat approval to create a new 14 lot subdivision located along Washington Park Boulevard staff analysis. The property in question is currently vacant and was previously subdivided. Um, the surrounding uses are single family residential and are zoned R1E to the north, south and west and M2 industrial to the east of the site. Uh, joint, or, joint, or, joint zoning ordinance 04.04 .04, building dimensional requirements subsection I standards applicable to R1E district Subsection one, subdivision of land. Any subdivision or resubdivision of land shall require a concept plan followed by a development plan followed by a primary plat for review and approval by the planning commission. At a public hearing in compliance with the requirements of the 1400 series of Indiana code 36-7-4 prior to submission of an application for primary plat review. So the reason I mentioned that is that they've been through concept plan, uh, you approved concept plan and development plan on April 26th um, with uh, a condition of reviewing of drainage with the sanitary district, which I believe the surveyor has done uh, to satisfaction because they did not, they came back and said that they have no uh, issues with the uh, 
submission as presented. Tonight, the petitioners before the plan commission to ask for primary plat approval. The plan is still to move forward with 14 lots and drainage has been reviewed by the sanitary district. The, the petitioner has also provided a traffic study completed by premier engineers, which concluded that the development will not produce any appreciable impact on the existing traffic conditions. No modifications to traffic controls will be required as well. It should be noted that the street width at this location is 56 feet of right of way and approximately 22 feet of pavement and two lanes of travel. Sidewalks are required to be installed for all major subdivisions. On April 18th, the petitioner did participate in the development review committee and there were no concerns about the utility connections or proposed subdivision. There is a permanent 20 foot sanitary easement between lots six and seven that will service the subdivision. Sanitary also recommended that it preferred the bioretention areas as shown on the proposed plat. Staff recommendation, staff has reviewed the subdivision and recommends approval of the primary plat. There are a couple corrections to be made on this plat, but I'll, we'll talk about those later. Thanks, Mr. York. Mr. Hale. My report uh, regarding petition number 900-22 sub 3, primary plat for Beechwood subdivision. The petitioner and owner of the property is WP21 LLC. The engineer surveyor is John A. Doyle and Associates. Uh, the attorney and presenter was Dan Granquist. Uh, the request tonight is a major subdivision of a approximate 2.71 acre parcel of land situated uh, just south of uh, the uh, southernmost uh, section of Beach Walk uh, between Jake Lane on the north, Washington Park Boulevard on the south, Loran Road on the west, and Childers Lane on the east. I think the property is properly identified in your material. Um, so I would start by saying we were the guinea pig for uh, notice of this time. Um, this is a rather big parcel, but um, you know that uh, just uh, two months ago, we approved new rules that provided that notice must be given to everyone within 300 feet of the property affected. That was in, in uh, a change from our prior rule that required adjoining, that is next to or touching property owners. So I just want to report on that while I'm telling you that uh, I, I was given a, in advance um, a copy of all the notice documentation. I find that it is in order and that you're free to go ahead and, and consider this matter. But there were, um, I think, approximately 60, give or take one or two, property owners that had to be notified. And, and I think... Um, just keep it in mind, we'll be reporting back and forth and we'll probably have some conversations about all this and how it goes. That affects everyone involved, um, but it provides a great deal more transparency and notice to the public at large. And that is certainly an important consideration. So for, for the record, you, you know that. Now, this is different from the minor subdivision um, we've already been through uh, a certain portion of this process, uh, which involves uh, filing a concept plan and a development plan and have those uh, reviewed by our administrator, Mr. York, and his department. Uh, and when he finds that it's in suitable condition, he sends it on to this body for approval of uh, the uh, primary plot. And so tonight, we're here considering the primary plot. Now, this is not the final plot. and It's not a plot that will get recorded. The subdivider and owner will go ahead and make those improvements that they intend to make and come back and submit a secondary plot. The secondary plot also requires approval by this body. And we've been through this process many times. However, our, our ordinance only requires that there be a public hearing on the issue at this meeting. 
So we will open this up to the public for their comment at this primary plat, but we aren't required to do so for the secondary plat when it comes back at some future date. Um, really, the standards that you have to worry about are again, similar to the minor subdivision. That is, does this plat meet our subdivision ordinance? If it does, you may approve. If it doesn't, but you find that there are modifications or, or matters that you could insist upon, you can add those modifications with an approval subject to that. Or you could find that the plat does not meet our subdivision ordinance and you could deny it on that basis. I would finally just like to add that I am adding to the record some uh, additional materials that I used in addressing the notice documentation made it my job easier. And I'll put those uh, beacon materials into the file as part of the record. At this time. Otherwise, I would note that the uh, petitioner submitted, um, I think, 14 documents. He followed our, our new ordinance very well. Uh, I think if you look at the submission, you'll see that we have information that is very helpful to you. Um, I think that we should take a review of this at some time in a future meeting and, and talk about how well this has taken place now that we've had our first guinea pig, if you will. <laughs> and with that, I will conclude my remarks. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Commissioners, any questions? If I could. Yes. Um, I think we we talked about this last time, but I would like to ask again, just for the record, I know the drainage plan was the, the one thing we asked for. Uh, was that again based on the 100 year? Uh, I think it's flood, but if, I, if I'm saying it wrong, please correct me. Yeah. Yeah. The 100 year floodplain? Yeah. yeah, 100 year. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Doyle has calculations and as was mentioned earlier it's been reviewed by the sanitation district which uh, was approved oh i'm sorry <laughs> i get a lot of help these days yeah, <laughs> we're we're in competition <laughs> <laughs> you look so comfortable over john we had to get you up here pardon you look so comfortable we had to get you over here. yeah yeah I, I appreciate that well, uh, yeah, we um, did our basic drainage calculation based on what's required with the ordinance, 100-year uh, flood uh, against the release rate, you know, a two-year, 10-year. Uh, so this has all been approved by the sanitary district. I spoke with uh, Arbor after our other meeting and presented him with my calculations. Uh, everybody seemed to be favorable. Uh, sewer and water are available on, on the site or at the site. The other utilities, telephone, gas, that type thing are all there. Cor correct me if I'm wrong. We're also taking water off the street, John, and in some sumps and bringing it onto the property. Yeah, we're, well. yeah. We're, we're accepting water, if you will. Yes. The curb and gutter, when we get the curb and gutter in, we'll have a have some uh, inlets in the street. And then back behind, we have some dry wells and something to dissipate water. Understood. Appreciate it. Uh, that was the only question I had. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? Yeah. Uh, in reference, there's a, a statement here that there is a 20-foot sanitary easement between lots six and seven that will service the subdivision. Is that going to be in effect or is it just the easement? Are they putting in a, a, a sanitary a system? We're going, build, we're going to put in a sanitary sewer. Yeah, um, okay. It will drain back through that easement mm -hmm. to the north uh, into the system and the beach walk system, which is under sanitary district control. And then there'll be sewer built 
parallel to and I'll say 50 feet north of uh, Washington Park Boulevard. Thank you. Is that? Oh, sure. absolutely. So um, it, during uh, primary and secondary, they'll have to work with sanitary district to design that system and uh, install. Um, that's this kind of that's what kind of gives them the buffer between primary and secondary plat. Um, they'll, they'll work with sanitary district to come up with construction plans, uh, install, uh, certify that it's built right. The sanitary district that is. Um, and, and with, once they come with construction plans and things of that nature and satisfy the sanitary district, then they'll probably ask us to sign off on secondary plot. So it's kind of the, the, the way it works with respect to that will then be dedicated to the sanitary district. It will become a, a, a public utility to them, just for clarification. Um, a question that occurred to me is, um, is the, uh, I'm not sure how do they, how they plan to phase the the building of all these homes, um, but just to uh, address the concerns of the neighbors, uh, is I, I assume it's just not going to be clear cut because then there's going to be that lag time between the time it's clear cut and the time they start building the houses for when the new drainage would actually be implemented. Well, this process tonight, if the primary plan is approved, it will approve the 14 lots as platted out there. Then it's just a matter of time. A developer will typically start with one lot. If the developer is going to build, then he'll build some spec homes on it. If they sell off the lots, then it'll be to a new homeowner. But there's there's no phases to this development. It's just one Oh, I see. A one, it's just one plat of 14 lots. And then as they're developed by the by the developer and or by prospective homeowners. Keep, keep in mind they're free forming these these bioretention areas, meaning that they're actually going to be retaining trees in these re, bioretention areas. I think that's the goal of free forming. They they mentioned that last time, which means they're not going to go in and just clear cut these lots okay. um they're trying to i think they're trying i mean obviously where the where the homes are going to be built you're, you're, you're going to lose some trees probably yeah. but the goal is i think to to really use the bioretention there's a true bioretention where trees will absorb that water if yeah. you will yeah. and that's the hence the free forming of those okay very good thank you which should be i mean obviously you know they're gonna be out there pounding nails so yeah it's gonna be a little disturbing but at least it won't look you know, where they'll just come in and clear cut everything. Great. Uh, I'll open it up to the public at this point. Any questions, comments from the public related to this petition? So please state your name and address. Stephen Johnson, 208 Mary Lane in Beachwalk. On the sanitary, uh, on the sanitary, is that end at Jake Lane? Uh, how far does that, do you have any idea where that tees off at in there? There's a stub that comes actually out of Jake, if I'm not mistaken, it comes on to come out over the line. Does it go over? Does it go over the line? Or? Oh, it does. Okay. That's all. That's kind of, that's all I was Yeah. It's like right in here. It's, it's, um, I don't know if it's shown on this plaque. John, help me out here. There is a stub. It comes over onto this property. Okay. Basically, yeah. straight south of Mary Lane. Yeah, that's it. Lane. that's it. That's it. Yeah. There's a manhole there. All of the cover for that manhole would be where the dead end. Well, and then it's just dumped down there. there. Okay. Uh, oh, is it? Okay. Oh, okay. So that's the weird. Continue, yeah. okay. I saw it on right. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. So, not hearing any, that public comment period is closed. And um, next step would be a motion. Could I? Uh, 
interject one or two more questions real quick before we do that. I was curious, uh, just an informal out of the group that's here tonight, was anyone who was not in the original notifications, but in the second group of notif notifications here tonight? So for the concept plan, you got in, didn't get one, but did get one for the second one. I, th I think Beachwalk as a whole, we got one, and then the second one, I got one mail to my house. Okay. Uh, you know, so I don't know if I got one the first time. Honestly, I don't remember, but but I know we got one both times as we walk regularly and sure. then as we live in, you know, a couple of houses away that I got one. Understood. I was just curious how effective the new mailings were. So. I, you guys doing that mailing? That, that's a great idea. Because my real house, I live in Illinois, and we have a trustee we do the same thing and we I don't know what you guys are doing because I think it's great and some people all of a sudden have no idea what's going on sure. when it's just property that are just so I do appreciate what you have understood thank you and if I may comment on that uh, Mary Lane is not up oh, Mary Lane is not adjacent to the property so those addresses were not so notified. those are right in the prior one, but they're within 300 feet. So many of them have been notified in this round, but previously the property owners association was notified of last on the concept and development. So that probably would have been public information to a lot of them up there, but uh, yeah, there were 50 or so notices for surrounding property owners. There's a lot more uh, involved in notices and, a lot more certified mail. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry. And then, and then my second question is: um, so there is no secondary step for us, Mr. Hale. Like, there's nothing we're forwarding on to council tonight or anything like that. We're just making uh, an approval, not approval, or approval with additional conditions. That's correct. Um, and so at this point, the uh, petitioner has two years to put this in place and come back with for final approval, if you will, which is a secondary plot. And once that's approved by this body, then that is recorded and that becomes the official subdivision document creating and, the new subdivision. And at that point, that's what goes on to council, and, correct? And the city council, well, the city council is not involved in this process. Okay. Um, we don't need their approval. It's this body that approves these subdivisions. Thank you. There are a couple other things we'll get. We'll get some as built once things are installed. There are a few other things we'll get, but uh, that's later on. Understood. Okay. Um, we have uh, somebody who would like to speak uh, who's watching. Uh, Mr. Ham, uh, you're free to speak at this point. Yes. I, I was just curious as. Uh, I'm I'm about a block down the street from from uh, this project. Am I going to be affected uh, water and sanitation wise? Mr. Ham, can you give your address, please? Seven fourteen Washington Park Boulevard. Thank you. Who wants to address that question? M Mr. Ham, affected? Can you define it? Like, well, how do you mean affected? Or like? Um, yeah. I mean, is anything going to change at all from what I have now? No. no. Water and sewer wise, no. Okay. During the construction, is anything going to change? Um, no. No. Okay. No. Thank you. 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 Yeah. No. Nothing's planned to be. Uh, uh, there's different uh, backflow preventions. There's different things that, that, that happen when we do construction and different stopgap mechanisms that, uh, prevent interruption of service, if you will, to some extent. Yeah. Thank you. That's my only question. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Ham. Any other public comment? Okay. Uh, that public comment period is closed. Now I think we're ready for a motion. I would move for approval of petition 900-22, uh, number three, uh, finding that it has met our subdivision ordinance standards. 
Is there a second? Second. Call for the vote. Mr. Balling? Yes. Mr. Danquist. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Granquist. I'm so sorry, Mr. Dan. You're, you're, I, you're, 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 you're accused. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Um, Mr. Gresham. Yes. Mr. Clender. Fred. Yes. Mr. Lashford. Yes. Mr. Zimmer. Yes. Unanimous. Uh, motion approved. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Another step forward. Thank the commission. Are there is there any uh, old or new business this evening to be discussed? Um, I have some new business. Okay. Uh, I have uh, a new assistant hired, and we have them starting on the 18th of July, and we have an associate planner hired starting on the 5th of July. Great. I'm very happy. Uh, so. So I guess in telling you this, that uh, I'll bring them here and we'll introduce them to you guys, let them get to know you. Um, my assistant will probably be helping me out with some things that we've uh, uh, been stalled. So hopefully we can get those back, uh, back up and running and uh, get some things moving forward. Great. Did we lose the I lost former Aaron. new assistant? <laughs> I did. I okay. lost Aaron to another community. Um, uh, I think you'll I think you'll find the new persons or the new people, the new hires, uh, very uh, uh, knowledgeable, um, high, very smart people, uh, very uh, well educated as well in in the planning field. So it's going to be really nice to have two two new employees who um, kind of can jump right in, if you will. Final call for any public comment. Public comment is closed. Any other commissioner comments about anything? How are we looking for a July meeting, Mr. York? Um, I'm not going to cancel it yet because I have had some requests. Um, but uh, I guess as of right now, I don't have anything formal to, to give to you, but... Uh, um, Stay tuned. Yeah, uh, it, it, I would. There may be some other things that we want to. If I can get, I just got to get get some people in. But there may be some things outside of petitions we talk about. But stay tuned for that. I don't want to cancel it quite yet. Thank you. Thank you. And I may have some comments on the application process itself. If we want to address that at some future meeting and. It, it actually was really good. I've talked to Dan a little bit about the process. Um, we've actually found a few little Scrivener's errors that we've, you know, we gave ourselves permission to correct Scrivener's errors, things of not substance. We've correct, we're going to correct some of those in there, just bad references, just weird language. Um, but I would like to hear kind of feedback on uh, what, what, went, what went well, what is kind of convoluted, I guess. So that'd be, I think it'd be helpful. I think it's a much better, I think it's a much better application though. I will say that. Yeah, it was interesting to note that the one petitioner out here from uh, Illinois thought our process was uh, in good standing. So it, it was good to hear. Any other comments? Hearing none, we are adjourned for this evening until the July meeting. It's kind of, this is important. This is the whole lot.